agenda tonight. Um, the first one is uh, to a hearing, and actually it's pretty much a hearing in three parts. Um, the first of which will be a hearing to reopen the special permit for 1398 to 1406 Mass Ave uh, to amend the parking uh, requirements there under. So uh, I think we'll take that one first. Um, this is with respect to the uh, actually two buildings in the Heights. We're going to hear three different hearings uh, for two buildings in the Heights uh, down across from the uh, bus depot. Um, and there might be some overflow between uh, the things as we go through. Um, I think in the end we'll be um, voting with respect to the hearings um, separately. But I think that we may be talking amongst each one of them. So um, we'll open the first one first. So that's the hearing to reopen the special permit for 1398 to 1406 Mass Ave to amend the parking. And I think we've got a, um, is it Mr. Keshin? Yeah. Right? yeah. If you would come forward, maybe. Yeah, that'd be great, please. Tell us a bit about what you're looking for on the parking side of the equation. Certainly. Let me introduce uh, the players for our team. Uh, to my left is Russell Martino, who is a... Hmm? I said hello. Oh. <laughs> I told you not to say that. <laughs> 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 he means it. <laughs> um, who is a representative of the owner of the complex called the Village uh, Center? Arlington Village Shop. Arlington Village Shop, that's what I said. <laughs> Uh, and with him and with us is the uh, uh, engineer's representative, uh, Tim Williams, who uh, should be familiar with the board as he's done many things here in town. Uh, Tim, would you come forward too? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, we are re opening, requesting an opening of the permit for the specific purpose of adjusting the parking uh, because of a change in the tenant mix, uh, we are um, uh, having two new tenants, and you're right, uh, Mr. Chair, as uh, an indication of three parts, like all of Gaul, it has been divided, divided. into three yeah. parts. Uh, and uh, although we're coming first, uh, we'd like to make a presentation of what the parking will look like, assuming uh, the board approves uh, the uh, tenant mix as it unfolds later on this evening. So our request will be contingent upon your approval of uh, the um, uh, other two hearings. What I might do is I might uh, continue this hearing uh, to the end so that we don't have to build in any contingency uh, uh, <laughs> into the actual oh, uh, wonderful. into the actual ruling. I, if that's oh, okay with everybody, I think it makes the most sense. All right, so in essence, uh, we have on the board here uh, parking. Uh, earlier uh, actions of the board reduced the parking based on the 20% reduction to a total of 68 spaces. And one of the plans that I have provided the board indicates that uh, 68 spaces uh, uh, was an approved um, uh, requirement or content condition of the uh, ARB in our earlier hearings. Uh, we now request uh, 67 uh, spaces, primarily because of a requirement of one of the prospective tenants, uh, the Carewell um, uh, folks who will make a presentation through their attorney, uh, Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, uh, regarding uh, the necessity or the request for uh, two uh, handicap accessible spaces near where their um, uh, operation will work out of. So we um, uh, have prepared a new plan, and Tim will go through that with the technical <coughs> aspects of how we arrived at um, the 67. Uh, and we lost a space primarily because of readjusting of the uh, handicap spaces and increasing the handicap space by, space by one. Uh, 
we also have uh, a, a vacant space uh, that we would like to fill with a compatible restaurant use. Um, and we'd like to speak to uh, the, uh, some way of eliminating the necessity of coming back to the board. Uh, and we've spoken with uh, Carol with regard to possible ways that we could do that uh, so that uh, adjusting of the parking would not necessarily require a hearing and council and meetings and continuances and so forth. So, Tim, uh, we'll sure, I can walk you through that. Um, the only real modification over the 2009 approved plan was the incorporation of a handicapped spot right here. Um, this is an existing, you can see on the 2009 plan, it's an existing standard parking spot. What we're proposing to do is just hash this out to ADA standards and then convert the adjacent spot into a handicapped spot. In doing that, we're also going to need to modify the sidewalk out in front and incorporate a ramp, um, an accessible ramp as well. So what that does was it impacts the uh, uh, landscaped open space. It's still at 14%, which is above the 10%. Um, so it's just a little bit of an additional impervious surface associated with that change. So you have one van spot and one standard accessible spot with appropriate signage. I'd like to point out that even though we're asking for a reduction in size, it does not mean that um, uh, we need to need to reduce the size. If all we're saying is that based on the new tenant mix, we only 67 maximum spaces are required after the 20% reduction. So we're not saying please give us something extra. We're just saying the tenant mix requires a readjustment and it comes out to one less space. Uh, Russ, would you like to speak to anything? Um, no, just inter introduce ourselves again. Uh, those of you that were here when Len came through the first time, he sends his regards and unfortunately he couldn't make it, but uh, he did want to come and, and see you all again and say hello. Um, uh, the message has been relayed to us for over a year now, the importance of trying to get new tenants into the center. We've been trying very hard. You will see the follow-on tenant that's coming for the restaurant use. We were very excited and fortunate to have a relationship with CareWell prior, uh, where we were actually looking at moving them into a separate space. As it ends up, they, they liked the space that they will be um, coming in front of you on. Uh, enough to motivate them to come to the center with the caveat that they they do operationally really want the additional handicap space um, when we met with Carol and we talked about the potential ways to get it to them uh, we actually felt that an additional space as opposed to moving the handicap space was the best way to do it um, given the seating counts that we're looking for given the operations of Panera when they were in we felt uh, that the reduction in parking would be okay. It wouldn't adversely affect the operations of the center, given the seating count that the new restaurant tenant is going to ask for. And then the additional request for potential seating on the vacancy uh, really is is to allow us to uh, appropriately market the space. We feel like the category of restaurants and, and uh, is is one that's desirable right now. We, we've heard both from customers at the at the shopping center and from, from leaders within the town that, that the restaurant use ended up becoming a bit of a, a town center uh, when it was here and operational. So we'd like to allow ourselves the ability to put another use that is compatible with the Bagelville use that you'll hear from tonight next door. And in order to do that, we'd like some level of assurance that uh, we can have some additional seating. Uh, that makes sense. And so the, that's reflected on the plan now that it gets us up to I think, 94 seats and then shows that we can do that within the zoning code with the 20% reduction at 67 spaces. Do you, do any of y'all have questions? Uh, I think I'll just start out because I think maybe I'm just missing something here. So I was following you until the last bit. About the, That's the, the part seats. where he told me not to talk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about the number of seats. So, is the is the 
and, and I'm sorry, but I'm not familiar enough with the, the special, this particular special permit to know. But um, are, are you asking for an increase in the seating for the, no. for the space? No. Okay. We, uh, what will happen is that there is approximately uh, 2,300, almost 2,400 square feet of okay. vacant space. We'd like to use that vacant space for a potential restaurant use compatible with all of the other tenants and what might work. This is a space place. outside of the Bagel Bill. This is a different... Next door to Bagel Bill. Next door to it. Okay. Okay. So all we're okay. asking is that in the future, because we have that space and because we can either fill it with retail or restaurant, we'd like to be able to have the flexibility of uh, uh, indicating that the uh, that space based on the number of seats in that space, if it were a restaurant use, would add up to the 67 uh, total spaces that are already uh, in the complex. Okay, but, but we don't have a piece of paper that says that here, um, or request that. No. No, you don't. Okay. So I'm not sure how help me out in getting there, how we're going to go from the paper that we have in front of us Actually, to what's being yeah, requested. Yeah, we're, we're requesting two things, first of all. We're requesting that based on the tenant mix, we need to reduce the, uh, we can reduce the uh, space requirements by one parking space. So we're requesting that. Yeah, okay, so, so when, uh, certainly, jumping ahead here, but, you know, in my mind, I was looking and from just the application and the, the, the materials that went along with it, you're going from, I think, a requirement at the old Jimboree from nine down to five, so I was getting there pretty quickly on the addition of the handicap space based on the fact that hmm. by the bylaw, you're reducing the need for that space down. Correct. So that's it. And I, Everyone can have their own say on that, but that was in my. This is how I was processing it. I think the next thing, though, and uh, I'll move on after I, I say this or uh, have you respond, is that's a big difference in saying, okay, whatever we put in that space, the parking's going to be fine, um, unless I see kind of the numbers in okay. front of me. All right. So going into step two, yeah, um, which is really an informal request to see if the board will um, accommodate us in the future, that we have 2,400 vacant uh, uh, square feet. Yep. Uh, we think we could put a restaurant in that space. Okay. So, uh, or at worst case, a new retail use. Yes. So, um, we have, based on our tenant mix, we have extra spaces left over mm -hmm. that we haven't technically utilized. So what we're asking the board um, uh, as uh, a sidelight to our presentation is if we could have some way of eliminating the necessity of coming back just because we have a new tenant and just because we have to go through the space adjustments all over again. If we don't use any more than the 67 spaces okay. for the 2,400 vacant space, uh, vacant square feet, um, then I guess the question is, can we do this informally, maybe by an affidavit that we would give to uh, the director who would work with the um, board so that a hearing might not be necessary just because we filled the 2,400 square feet. Okay. Well, let's, uh, is, is that okay? Certainly. I think we'll open sure. it up. Um, so why don't we go down and ask whatever questions. I, I think it might <coughs> make sense to kind of keep the two things separate if, if we can as we go. Mm -hmm. Before we go yeah, further, please. can we just get some clarity on where all those spaces are on the plan? where the care well is and how many square feet it is, where the vacant space is and how many square feet, and where Bagelville you mean and the, how many square feet it the is. actual uh, yeah, buildings? Is, I'm assuming the vacant is in the middle of the two. 
I'm not sure that's a that correct way. assumption. This is because this plan is, is more geared at what was approved uh, in 2009, it doesn't show the individual spaces, but currently in the shopping center, approximately here is Massage Envy. Directly next to it is the Meat House. Mm -hmm. Directly next to that is the roughly 3,500 square feet that's going to go to Bagelville. The old Panera. The old mm -hmm. Panera space. Right. And then directly next to that is the vacancy that we've been talking okay. about that's mm -hmm. about 2,400 square feet. And Urgent Care is all the way on the other side. Correct. Carewell yeah. is here. Carewell. And this is uh, where Jimbury currently is operating. Okay. And taking up the same space. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Bagelville and um, Carewell are both taking over taking over the demise space as it sits today for the for the issues. Thank you. So it divides up what was Panera. No, they're no. taking what was Panera in whole and no more. And, and using less seats. And there was already a little extra twenty five hundred square foot space. Yeah, yeah, that was the it Jimmy was a Craig. former <coughs> Jimmy Craig that was there and gotcha. it's vacant now and, and okay. what Dick was presenting was is there a way to I got you. You know get approval yep. based on the parking spaces yeah. for this thing down, like Christine, I was trying if to we get a less one. Gotcha. Thank you. That clarifies a lot for yeah. me right there. Okay, Bruce, why don't you start? Okay. So, with respect to May what... Excuse me? I can pass for the bar. Are you feeling something? Uh, we're in the middle of a meeting right now. Yeah, I, I need to go home. I say, say I can't go that way. Oh, uh, sure. sure. Come on sure. over. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Come on through. That's fine. Have a good night. No, I see the... That's okay. No problem. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a home place. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
two criteria that we're looking at. We've got a formula for retail, and then we've got a formula for restaurant use. The restaurant use is based on seats. Um, the retail use is based on size of the uh, of the of the space. Um, so it's very. I think it's hard for us to project how many spaces you would need to have even before the board, pursuant to its special permit powers, started to reduce that number. So, as much as I would like to make your lives easier. Um, I think you're asking us to engage in a bit of speculation about what the use might be in the future, and I, I just don't see Could how I we speak do it. speak to that? Because I think that's yeah, a no, valid please, point. That's a, yeah. uh, my, my thinking is that um, if we've used, for example, 60 spaces, and we have an excess of seven spaces, just by example, um, then we know what kind of retail based on uh, one space per 300. And we know how many seats would be available for restaurant use based on the excess number of, of spaces. So while on the one hand it may be speculation, but once we've targeted a prospective tenant, mm -hmm. we can say, OK, you want a restaurant use, you've got to know you can only have seven spaces or 10 spaces. and if the way I would play it out in my mind is that we would then say, here is the name of our tenant, here is the number of seats <coughs> that the tenant expects to use. We would prepare an affidavit to that effect. We would hand it to your director who would then bring it to your board and at, at the meeting you say, well this makes sense, there's no need to have uh, any kind of a hearing just to adjust the parking based on the number of spaces and seats left over. So uh, maybe it's too simplistic, I don't know. But. <clears throat> well, I guess I would also not necessarily, I mean, it, it seems like we could be signing off on a new tenant without ever actually seeing what that tenant's use would be, um, or facade changes, or other things that are germane to special mm -hmm. permit granting. So, um, my own inclination, and you know, just speaking for myself on this, would be I would say uh, I don't I don't see how that would work under the bylaw. But um, okay. okay, that's it. Agree with me. So picking up right where Bruce left off, I think that we'd want to see the signage, all the same things you've brought today for that for your new tenants. Mm -hmm. We'd want to see the same items, and that would require either a meeting where you'd be before us to explain things and point out what you have, and we can ask you questions, or a hearing, which is our normal. Which, is, uh, which would be a hearing as well, yeah. So, it makes sense that you would probably need that hearing. I'm beginning to sense a trend here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a trend, it's, uh, Just in, it's in the continuing way it works. His thought process, <laughs> if I could, it's helpful yeah. to see all of this. Yeah, add on another footnote, I, I think it's, it, the problem is you're beginning to erode the public process a little bit too, and if it is part of the public hearing for a, a special permit, I'd be reluctant to say, okay, we're going to have some alternative uh, method, and it leaves, it, it prevents public comment from being written. Uh, rather you. than hear the rest of the comments, why don't we just withdraw <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> step two? <laughs> my, my other question on that would be, you probably know right now how many square feet you have. Yes. And you know how many extra how many extra parking spaces are there? See, and but before we, before we <coughs> go too would, deeply into yeah. this, I think I think the other flaw in it is that the required is seventy seven, the proposed is sixty seven. That's the so seven. which is no I mean but which is the extra? Is it the extra off of the seventy seven or is it the extra off of the is it off of a legitimate count the, or is the, it off the, of a so reduced So my count? request to to Dick in formulating this and as wrong as I may have been, was that when we did the math on figuring out if it made sense for us to be able to put another restaurant in the 2406, is that to me it came down to how many seats does that restaurant, how many seats can I put in that right. restaurant, does it make sense? And using the existing approval and using the zoning bylaw, if we, ha if we applied this 20% reduction every time, mm -hmm. it actually came out that I could I could theoretically fit within 67 parking spaces according to the bylaw and go upwards of 50 or 60 seats in this adjacent space. So 
uh, my request, and it was late in the game, or the presentation could have been a little bit better, was can we get them to just say, yes, it's okay to put 50 or 60 yeah. seats in there so that when I go out to market and I have a tenant who says, mm -hmm. I want you know, 60 seats, I can say, yes. So and you're I, saying I'm you have maybe 12 or 13 extra spaces with the 67. Applying the mathematics that are in the zoning bylaw and using the 20% reduction, yes. Uh, okay. But I, I completely get that it's more than simply counting seats for, for this uh, authority, and, and that's fine. I, I don't, this isn't a deal killer for our ability to get good tenants in. It's just I was looking for a way to be more forceful when I was marketing this space. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but that's and I will say we want you to have good tenants, and we want to work with you in, in, in getting those good tenants because I think everyone believes that that, could, that, that is and can be a very vibrant area of the town. So. I, I don't think you should hear anything about no, that. No, that, that's fine. Actually, we, we will, though, withdraw that now. because I, I don't want it to drag us down too long. We have what I think is more important things to hear. For, you know, right. So in reference to the 67 spaces and the use um, that you're talking about that you've come before us with, the, the care well, I have no issues with the change that you've made, subtracting the two spaces and putting in one accessible space and a and a, an aisle space. I do um, have a question. The ramp uh, that Tim mentioned, is that actually a ramp? I don't see a curb there. Is it I, a ramp up I, to I the door? I believe it's a flush curb right now. That's yeah. why we have parking bumpers. Okay, so it's not really a ramp. It's just no, it's a just, sidewalk. Yeah, sorry. There might be a little bit of a grade. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't have any other questions on this aspect of it. I don't, I don't think I have any questions or comments as to what's currently on the table, so that's fine. I'm okay, too. Okay. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, uh, Carol, anything? Or? No. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Yep. Um, when Tim makes that change, the 50, mm -hmm. anywhere where you've made a change, it would be helpful to have a cloud okay. on all your changes. <coughs> There's a number of changes on here that don't have a cloud on it. Yep, I can do that. So we kind of had a compare this to the old one and figure out what changed, so everything should have a class. Um, so, I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. Why don't we take a, I think, I think I, I would like to have, um, maybe entertain a motion um, to move uh, this particular one along. Um, I believe you want a contingent on the actual, yeah. um, and that can uh, end this evening. Right. You're right. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so, um, I entertain a motion for the uh, reduction of the spaces to 67 with the addition of a, uh, an accessible, uh, handicap accessible spot um, and amending the special permit uh, in that way. So then, can we do that? Uh, I'll second it. <laughs> Can I amend what yes, you said please. just briefly? Yeah, that's why, that's I, the why only, I usually... The only thing I would add, Mike, is here. just to say, as shown by ah, yes. the Allen and Major Associates plan, and I'm trying to look at the two. stage. Yeah. Um, sheet, sheet two on our handout. As oh, revised. Sheet C2. C2, yeah, because the date I see on it is 0705. Well, they're both sheet C2, yeah, so you have yeah, to say sheet two is, of... Yeah. I, on the bottom uh, right hand corner, I. Oh, there it is. The date on top. Yeah, see, there's a tiny date down here. Do there's you know? a date on issued for review in the revision oh, block. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so September 19 of 2013, issued for review. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, doesn't have to be a part of the motion, but would be as revised by Alan Major Day for those technical. Correct. Right. A actually, Tim, why don't we use the big one and why don't sure. you give the big one to Carol um, as the one because I think that was more correct. Is it the one that's yeah. Was it? Yeah. I think it was just reorganized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so that's that's that as the restaurant seats uh, piece of the puzzle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go with this. I take it back. Yeah. Let's uh, go with this. We're gonna go with. There's the one more one. thing that maybe should be changed. Your and, and maybe it's not right, but your your letter um, noted the square footage as being 
2,494. Is that the space for tenant three, which right now is listed as 2,431? Well, this is a carryover plan that was carried through a permitting process for 1406 Mass Ave. So if that's where footage has been modified during the construction process, I can update the plan as well. It'd be good to update the plan and also put the dates, since the letters refer, or not the dates, the addresses, since the letters okay. referring to those addresses. These are all technical changes that yeah, could I still go with this. It's easier for me to just update the plan and resubmit it to Carol. Take in all your comments. I'll update it and I'll get it back to her. Great. Yeah, I think works. the most important change is the is the fifty, the fifty-two. Yeah, what I did was I so. didn't amend that when I took out these two. No, that that's fine. I just I think that that's I mean the square footage would be nice to get correct. It's just um, we're dealing with the parking right now, so it should be okay. Um, okay. Uh, Carol, did you get enough today? <coughs> I got the motion, uh, it's sheet C2 of the Allen & Major Plan dated September 19, and that it will be, uh, a, a, a revised plan will be submitted. I think that was all. Uh, administrative <coughs> corrections, with administrative corrections. Revised plan with administrative Technical corrections. Question. Yeah, yeah. And you said that the 50... Parking spaces is the thing you want to see. The mo yeah, the 52 needs to be reduced to 50. Thank you. Okay, I think we did have a, uh, a second, second. Uh, by Bruce. One of the longest seconds I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, That's Bruce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all, all opposed? Okay, so I think we're good. And that is contingent on uh, the uh, third hearing. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next hearing we're going to move to is the hearing to reopen the special permit for 1398 Massachusetts Avenue to amend the signs for Bagelville. <coughs> okay. okay, well, now I am Carl Tomeyan. <laughs> I am kind of surprised by that. I, uh, Mr. Tomeyan is uh, uh, at another hearing with the Board of Selectmen, and he didn't know if he could make it okay. here in time, so um, I'm just going to sit in for him. This is the client, uh, Sergio Gonzalo, and uh, he intends to uh, create a bagel bill shop uh, for our location that was current, uh, the formerly the Panera location. Uh, although the Panera location had many more seats, um, the proposal is to have uh, only 64 seats uh, in uh, this location. And uh, I don't believe any special permit a requirement for usage is uh, called for since this is a uh, hearing uh, where we're replacing one restaurant use with another yep. restaurant use. And the only thing that really changes is the number of seats in the menu and the signage. So we are really here uh, to request a um, uh, uh, signage in essence, just replacing whatever Panera had, wherever it had it. Uh, and so I think it might be appropriate. Um, I've got some uh, pictures of the current situation, um, which, mm -hmm. which I, could, I think there's enough for everyone. And um, the first sheet that shows existing signage conditions is what the um, uh, front looks like right at this particular moment where you can barely see the Panera logo uh, on the front, but that is the way it looks right this moment. Uh, and on the next sheet, the existing signage uh, is only relevant to show you uh, what um, uh, the rest of the uh, shops look like the signage. And this third sheet, which says previous, previous signage conditions, shows uh, Panera uh, in uh, what was adopted and approved uh, by the board uh, 
and it's uh, at, at the time that it appeared before the board. So what is in front of you is essentially a request to um, reinstall signage that says instead of Panera, Bagelville, and uh, on the front in that um, uh, area where Panera had its prior sign, and also at the rear where Panera had its prior sign, and also at the um, uh, standing sign, uh, which just requires the insertion of a, um, a modest uh, notice of uh, who the tenants are in the uh, uh, village area. You also have the menu uh, uh, that uh, Carl provided uh, the board, along with the building permit for the work that's going to be done interior, uh, along with the um, aspect of the uh, uh, plan, floor plan, uh, for your view. I don't think we have that. Really? I don't think we have that. Floor, floor plan. Floor plan. Floor I, plan. Didn't, yeah. uh, I did not but, uh, distribute the menu. Menu. The menu is, the... is really not the. You have it. I'm curious. Yeah, I'll do it. It's <laughs> not really the. Uh, uh, I'm that's sorry, we're not ready. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. We don't and then I didn't think we saw it. Did we get the interior of the scene? Oh, we at do. The very end. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. We don't have a building permit for yeah. the interior. Fair enough. Oh, just for sorry, the signs. Signs. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, I'm sorry. okay. I'm sorry. So I guess it was just a. Uh, sorry, my bad. Okay. And Sergio is here to answer any particular questions. Uh, but my sense is that um, uh, without having Bruce weigh in, that. <laughs> 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 that we <laughs> we really are substituting one tenant for another tenant and signage the same way. Okay. Thank you. Bruce? You know, uh, it's been a long-standing tradition of the board that we have, you know, materials and models, and I think, you know, some bagels would be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, it just so happens. <laughs> 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 the pen in the pocket, now we're good. So I have a couple questions about lighting. So on the um, front facade, the front signage, um, it looks like the goose the neck lamps are still there. Yeah, the, the exact story. same lighting will okay. be utilized throughout. Okay. On let's see, about the fourth or fifth page of this, where we have the picture of the bagel, um, it says Halo Lit 3D Park Bagel. So, is the bagel going to be lit? Uh, yeah, inside the bagel. Inside the bagel. Okay. So then, what would we be yeah, seeing from right. the street? Uh, we, we, you're not going to be able to see the light, but he, uh, when you look at you're going to see the bagel built with the light up, like uh, uh, the meat house. Okay. As of now. So, would it be the, the white area around the letters would be lit? Yeah. Okay. And the bagel. And the bagel and the itself bagel. around the and outside the and in the, the hole. Yeah. Okay. And then the signage in the back of the building, is that lit also? No. No? So, well, it has the, the gooseneck yeah. lamps looking down at it, but, but the, there's no illumination coming from the sign itself. So the, picking up again on Bruce, the halo lit, uh, typically the halo lit shines light back to the wall, correct? And then the letters pop out? Or is it actually in the edge? It's on the edge. Um, it's actually the on the edge. The little one. But you don't see the light, you just see the illumination. It's in the edge. Okay. Okay. Um, the only thing I saw was that the, the sign and height is more than our four-foot standard, but the Panera sign was also more than the four-foot standard. So I don't see an issue with it, but um, it 
it is higher in, in what you've shown, which are very helpful, these signs here, the Panera Bread sign is, is even higher, I think, mm. than the Bagel yeah. Bill sign. So, I don't have any issues with any of it. Was, <laughs> with Andrew. was the Panera sign lit? At, not with the goosenecks, but the, the 3D halo lighting. I'm just trying to picture what it looked like. It was like I think it was. It was. It was. Yeah. It's a photograph of it here, but it's not. That's no, I can't it's tell. It's not the older one. I just know this girl. It's a, yeah. Well, it's slightly different. It's just a different awning, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your wraps are the top. It's the same. Okay. So I was just trying to remember the lights. I have. I have no issues with. With anything here, I think that's fine. Andy? I'm also okay with that. Yeah. Bruce, sorry, I forgot to ask about this. In uh, Attorney Tumayan's uh, uh, letter, he talks about a proposed bracket sign. I figured that out. Okay. If I could, I'll jump in here. I think what he's talking about there. Oh, the bagel itself. No, no, <laughs> it's not even that. It's this. Yeah. 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 Which it's, is in the, the bracket it's, it's the sign on uh, the signpost. He oh, was okay. concerned that that did yeah, not doesn't, meet the bylaw right. requirement. Yeah. So it's just that little he sign. was requesting as a just in case. Just in case. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, but but I, I figured it out after I kind okay. of uh, parsed it. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, any, I have no comments on it. Um, anything else from the board? Okay, then I'll uh, entertain a motion. On it. Um, to approve the signage um, for Bagelville as presented in the, um, well, I guess uh, we'll go by the date of uh, um, the gamut signs. Um, sign package. Sign package dated, even though it's crossed out, 9913. Uh, why don't you call it the date that it was stamped? You want date stamps? Sure. Previous uh, version, um, but the date was That's changed, fine. So. That's fine. So uh, date stamped 13 uh, October 31st, 2013. So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's the Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Bagels. Hey, I can also be Mary Winston. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be much kinder and nicer than you. Dick, please tell uh, Carl. Don't feel made. compelled. <laughs> please tell Carl he did a great job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. 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 Good evening. Hi, Mary. Hi. Okay, so now um, we're going to open the next. Um, after getting back on schedule, actually, they're almost close to it anyway. Um, and once I find my agenda, I'll be able to see it a lot better. Uh, thanks. Know what I did. Um, we're now going to um, have a hearing to reopen the special permit for 1406 Mass Ave to amend the signs and parking for Farewell, which I think we're we can do the parking again, but I don't think we'll need to, so since we just did it, so. Um, okay. All right, thank you. My name is Mary and Stanley O'Connor. I represent Farewell Urgent Care Center of Massachusetts. With me is Terry Giovi, who's the Vice President of Carewell, and a representative, Jason, from Back Bay Sign Company, who will review the signs. Um, you have our letter, but let me just review. This is a very different use than what's been in the, these two buildings uh, in the past. Um, and uh, it is a use permitted as of right in the zoning district. What Kierwell is proposing to provide is uh, stop in certain medical services, flu shots, treatment for colds, uh, non-life-threatening accidents, that type of service for the community. And one of the things, they have seven locations, correct, presently <coughs> in Massachusetts and one in Rhode Island. In fact, there's one in Lexington that recently opened on Bedford Street. Now, I will tell you, I live in the Heights, and I uh, patronize this uh, neighborhood shopping center quite a bit, three or four times a week, Panera, the meat house, and I never realized what was in the, the other building, frankly. I didn't even realize there was a gymboree, because I would suggest to you that a lot of the activity goes on in that other building. There's a lot of activity. 
So signage becomes very important for my client um, to distinguish. Uh, they're on the end of that second building. Uh, this is a very different use that was there before, and it becomes very important uh, by way of uh, identifying the area. The other thing I would suggest to you is that this use, unlike many retail uses, there will be no, what we would say, paper signs in the window, you know, that you see inside, hanging inside the window. So that would be, um, not be something that they would be doing. Uh, they're going to have, they're in the space of, proposed to be in a space of uh, 2,400 square feet, actually almost 2,500. They require one parking space per 500 square feet. So this is actually a reduction in parking from the Jim Marie use that was there. Um, my client, so she can answer any particular questions you have about the use. JC can speak to the signage. Um, I'm gonna, if you'd like to ask any questions, what they're proposing. Can I start at the other end? Uh, and surprise Andy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you? I think I'm, I'm fine with this. I, this. I didn't see the color till now, so. Could you we have samples relative to the yeah. awning. If you'd like to see that too. And we're moving to red to accentuate medical care. Uh, urgent care is something that is new to New England. If you go anywhere else across the country, you'll see urgent care is on every corner. Uh, I've been in healthcare for 30 years. This is actually my first time in the development court, so it's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm glad so someone thinks so. Can we, uh, 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 if you'd case, like our autographs, that's case you like wanted to great. look at education you. of what we do and um, you. You, know, what, you know what we're trying to accomplish with urgent care. You know, we want we want to make health care as more accessible and affordable to people. Yeah, we all know that emergency departments are so, uh, just so overrun and five to ten hour waits and you know, urgent care, we can take care of some of those simpler things that aren't life threatening, that people can get in and out quickly. We have really nice sites, they can be comfortable while they're waiting and uh, meet meet the needs of the community. So, you know, our mission is to have efficient, uh, you know, affordable uh, and quality health care in the neighborhoods. So, so that's what we're trying to accomplish. Just tell me a little bit about, just look around the corner here about the color and everything, because I only got the black and white. So how does it, how does the signage work? So you just replace the awnings. Um, All the red to just, yeah. And then you have, so you have the black care. It's actually, um, yeah, green. it's actually blue. It's, uh, oh, yeah. It's a navy blue. Okay. So you really fit nicely within the frames and so forth. I mean, I looked it over in black and white. I think it looks yeah. fine. Oh, there you go. Am I <laughs> <laughs> you, you are special. I this end of the table. Maybe I didn't. I, didn't see I think it. we were short one or two. Oh, it's okay. It's packets. Okay. And the locations. Are, are we adding any locations that? That's the one added location. Yeah, that's on the side. And the rear, right? The rear. Like I think the rear does side. have something. How is the? Uh, how are those ones that are on the wall applied? Are they on top, or are they? Looks like they're being set. The um, the front sign. Um, these the, the top the care wall letters are halo lit, and that's it's the type where the the metal's a metal can that, that shines on the wall. So okay. it gets so the silhouette. Okay. Right. And then the urgent care letters are face lit, like the all the other signs on the building right now. Okay. And so that would be the same for the side sign. That would be um, face lit. The urgent care is right. face lit on the side then, elevation. Actually, in all three cases. And then in the rear, it would be just like the front sign, where the top the care wall letters are halo lit, and the, and the urgent care letters are face lit. The smaller ones in the case of the one on the back. Yes. Facelit means. Facelit means that the, 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 the light comes out the face, just like the Jim Marie sign, the Unleash sign, the hair cuttery sign that are currently at the, on this building. But okay. you don't see the lamp. Right. It's behind. Right. And then this is a side yeah. profile yeah. here. This shows that yeah. the, the, the halo letters stand off the wall a little bit, and the face of letters are flush mounted on the wall. So that the light yeah. can create this glow behind, right, halo, exactly. and this Washes is just on. an internally illuminated light. Right, right, but not in the case of the urgent care sign. That's lit. That is face lit. Yep, all face three lit. urgent care letters would be the same face right. lit. Which, yeah. we, which is allowed in the zoning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There's two new signs, though, sorry. The back doesn't have a sign, right? Right now. Currently, no, it doesn't have. 
Yeah. Yeah. Put the sign in the back. All the people will be parking in the back. We want to. We don't want anyone to try to walk around the building to the front. So for us, the the back of the building will be the front. Oh yeah, that's where they're going to yes. come in. Oh, yes. that's where you have the. Right. Yes, that's yeah, where yeah, our yeah, reception yeah. will be in our waiting room. And and the signage, the urgent care as you come down Mass Ave from Lexington, kind of distinguishes it because you know you you see the bank um, uh, and really your focus is uh, the bank and this gives people a sense of what they're approaching. Yeah, I think you need that sign there. Yep. But I'm just wondering if you frame it with the with the background or something, it might be okay the way it is, but you could also put a panel behind it so it, it, pops it looks like a sign. That is something to consider. I mean, I, I think because red of the looking red, right. they're going to be oh. effective. Yeah. But, um, on the side elevation? Yeah. Yes. Are they red with a white margin on that? No, that it's, 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 it's just the way the drawing's done. They're, okay. they're, they're solid red. This, they're this solid is red. the side, this is the, the yeah. front. So. so that should pop out on a yeah. so light building. This should be enough. should be. That's a clean look. And they're lit. It is a clean look, yeah. Right. Okay. So. I think that's great. I like the red. Okay. <laughs> oh, I like it. I think it's. I think it's good too. We usually don't allow two signs in addition to the front of the building, but in this case, it seems like it's really warranted that you're going to need it and it's for a good use, and people are going to need to get there quickly. So that makes sense, and it's a very non obtrusive type of sign, also. So I think it looks good. Did you inquire with the building inspector or the police uh, uh, director of police services with respect to a red lit sign? So he hasn't weighed in one way or the other on that? No. Okay. That's, you think the police may have an objection to a red lit sign? Well, the, it's section 703C says no red or green light shall be used on any sign if in the, if in the opinion of the inspector of buildings with the advice and consent of the director of police services such light would create a driving hazard. Okay, so, I can talk to the building inspector. Okay. Um, and on the side there you would be looking right at Right, you know? right. I think it would be a non-issue rear and front. Rear and front I don't see a problem. Yeah. Yeah, especially but I think somebody driving yeah. down Mass Ave, particularly if the sign is just turning on, it, it could be one of those things that momentarily catches your eye and, and might confuse the driver. But that's really a, a, for the building inspector to determine, not for, for the board to determine. Um, I actually part company. I'm not uh, with, with my colleagues on, on the uh, side elevation sign. Um, I think you are allowed to have two wall signs, one along the facade of the building, uh, on the street facade, and one on the parking facade. Um, you'd have to have a have the board determine that uh, or find that it's in the public interest to allow for a third sign, and I'm not convinced. But I'm open to persuasion. So, from my perspective, I don't know that I'm convinced, and I actually don't like the side elevation, uh, the si uh, because. What are your hours going to be? Eight to eight. Okay. Seven days a week. I look at that, and I think people are going there no matter what. And they're going to be surprised that it's locked. And to, it doesn't say care well, urgent care. It simply says urgent care. It's going to be lit up during the night on hours that you're not going to be open, I presume? No, it, will, it won't be lit up when we're closed. On the side as well, the side elevation? That could absolutely be done. I actually would recommend that. I don't think you want to have a sign I that's think, urgent. Care. Yeah, oh, and I think that's my problem. Because people would think that we're open, and then no, they would have to shut off on a timer right when they right. close. Yeah, and and but that just so eight to eight. That means you're really only. It's only being effective for a couple hours, a day, essentially. I, I I'm I'm a little bit with Bruce. I think at the very least, it would need to say care well, urgent care. Okay. Um, on the side, because it, I think just a red sign that says urgent care just makes it look like a 24-hour-a-day uh, place that I can go and, you know, for whatever it is I need. I, I think what you're putting in there is a great idea, and it's great and everything else. 
it's just this one elevation that I think is, is kind of difficult. And I think that, um, you know, in saying it, you said, well, we want it on the side so people who need care can get it. Well, I think that's exactly the reason why I don't want it there. It's, it's, it's a little bit too much of, of it. And I think, um, I, I think I'm a, a, a little bit in Bruce's camp on that particular one. I think at the very least you need care well, urgent care on the side. Um, and I think if you were to turn it off whenever the, it was closed, is it really doing get, getting you the benefit you want uh, for having the sign in the first place? If, if your hours are only eight to eight, um, I don't know. I, 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 can I can I just yeah wait please minute. please. I think it does serve a public uh, purpose from the perspective of if you're coming down Mass Ave, and I do agree with you. Probably should say care well urgent care. So yeah, I mean um, care well urgent least. care. Um, it defines it, but um, it draws your attention to it during the day, um, and at night when it's lit. You'll have it there, but when when the, they're closed, the light is going to be off. So there'll be no um, sense that it's a 24-hour type facility, or people would be drawn to it in that respect. Okay, so if that's the case, why have it lit at all? Well, take daylight savings time, five right. to eight. Sure, five Start to eight. Yeah. Right together. Is is it handling emergencies usually? Non non life threatening emergencies. Non life threatening. And if somebody comes in that does have, you know, we not right there. We'll, you know, treat and make sure that, you know, we minimize anything, get the ambulance right there. And uh, we also work closely with hospitals, uh, the, the nearest hospitals, you know, all the physicians, the PCPs, because we want to collaborate and be part of the medical community. So uh, to, to try to enhance that fast care for people, quality care, they need to know we exist. And as I said in the beginning, urgent care is so new to New England. All over the country, there's 9,000 urgent cares across the country. And the reason why CareWell came into uh, New England and Massachusetts in particular is because there weren't, there were six when we started a year ago. Uh, I think it's up to about 13. So, uh, so it is catching on and people, and part of it, part of the big thing that we have to do is educate the public of what is urgent care, when to use urgent care, and how uh, basically you can get service quickly, efficiently, and quality service. So that's why for us, in order to have, to, be, to become a destination, you know, we need to be able to become a destination for people so they know they can get good care there. We don't get referrals from other places, it's as people get to know us. Mm -hmm. so, can, I think can I see that board? Um, I have one other question. I just want to look up. Um, sure. You had mentioned that the reception is going to be at the back. Yes. So what is going to happen with the windows in the front? The windows in the front, we've been talking about potential you know, wrapping. You know when you see those the vans that ha that are wrapped, uh, but we have something really nice and medical on the front uh, with our services to let people know what they can they, what they can get inside. So is walking by, they, they could know uh, what what kind of type of things we do, flu shots, things like that. Or it'd just be glass, tinted glass. See, I'm wondering if you make it just like a sign. You know, it's, it's not to be, it's not looking like it's the emergency ward of a hospital. It's a, it's a sign. I mean, you're a mm -hmm. business. Care well, urgent care. Then, then you have to evaluate it on whether you think it's needed at all. Right. right. Something about the way it is now, it seems, it's, it's, it seems a little like an emergency thing. And that um, probably the um, fire chief would have, or police chief, was it? Yes, the would have chief. Director of Police Services. Maybe yeah. less exception to it. Take, if the this, care well was certainly there at the least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take care well, urgent care, and just put it here as a small sign with the same brown background. And that's your logo. That's your thing. I mean, the person's on that side of the building. This is just a blank mm -hmm. wall. Yeah, well, and I think, that's I think if it were a sign, that would yeah. be. Going back to your question about the windows, though, it yeah. sounds like yeah. you could potentially have additional signs in the window. Which I think that's what I'm trying to. Sign. That's what I'm trying to understand because we have had situations where you know, and right now I'm trying to think of what else is in that block. The in fact, when Jimbery went into that space, we specifically I recall this conversation at the hearing said you have to keep the windows 
open to keep the sidewalk vibrant. Well, we get those air cutters. No, no, no. They're for people to do that. Yeah, and it's okay. just. Yeah. Okay. So and just we have kind the same of, situation in Needham, where the front is the back, and the back is the front, and the windows are just just there. Is the front door going to be egress only? Yes. So no one will go into the sidewalk from the sidewalk. It'll be locked. Unless for some reason there's an ordinance to not have that happen. In Needham there is. <clears throat> so we have a, um, you can see when people come in, the waiting room and everything is in the front. We have a, a, an alarm. It's, it's a nice bell. It's not, yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. It's right. Yeah. So as if someone comes in from the front, because Needham wants the front door open, then where someone goes right there to greet them. I think that would be really helpful. There's parallel parking in front of the building. Mm -hmm. And two of your signs are going to be in the front of the building. So people are going to be trying yeah. that door sure. all the time. With the same exact um, uh, issue. So that would make sense. Arrow. And just the nature of the other shops that are there. They're all using the front door. Yeah. And I know, personally, if I can park on the street in that particular plaza, I park on the street. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, right. it's just, yeah. So it's, it's. Mm -hmm easier uh, just from the perspective of a customer. Um, so I think that that would be helpful is to is to try to figure out a way to keep that front door open yeah. just for the life of the sidewalk mm -hmm. and, and not to have just a dead patch. As you mentioned, a lot of the activities is on the other side, so it would be you know helpful to liven it up at least a little bit if we could. Or at least as much as better it is. practice. We we try to encourage businesses in Arlington not to turn their front doors into walls. Uh, the board has um, encouraged uh, other businesses, other retailers and restaurants to keep their windows clear and open and um, translucent and to actually use the front doors. We're trying more and more to open the front doors and open the windows uh, to keep that streetscape vibrant. So I think the board would be um, wise to, to try to do that. And I think it would be in your interest too, uh, because if if your business does that, another business wants to do it, and another business, and before you know it, it, it can uh, detract from the experience the uh, people have in the commercial district. We well, don't want that be because we want, you, yeah, we want you to have a nice, um, a, a pleasant place to Absolutely. operate your business. We could suggest for the, the side coming down from Lexington on Mass Ave a sign that says care well, urgent care, um, comparable. Size you think is appropriate that has a background and a frame, basically. Yes. Yeah. What we could do actually is like kind of like the this? same application, but the letters are mounted to a panel, right? You know, right. Mm -hmm. That has like the that same matched. background. Would, you, would you want it to match that 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 um, ceramic tile um, material, that uh, kind of off white, the one that's behind the current side? Yeah. Or the one on the, what's on the front we behind could, the I'm, side? No, I'm saying we could try to, that for the panel, the sign that goes there, we could try to match that color. What's uh, behind the front panel? This is a different color. It's like, um, I don't know. Match that one. Yeah, it's kind of brown, I think. Can you, can you match that one? Yeah. Too? Yeah, I think that would look good. Yeah, like a half tone. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, I like Danny's idea to do that. If you're going to allow an extra sign. Yeah, I think right. it looks more like a sign. I, 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 I can get there. I can get there. I just, the, the way that it was popping out, I think, was a little bit more popular. Are you convinced? Yeah. Well, I like the suggestions. So, I think I'll, I'll come on board. Um, okay, anything else? Have a sign now. I think it is advisable to have that sign helps to get people to that, especially if they're going to be sick. I do too, yeah. yeah so. I right. need to find it. <laughs> right, and I think And I we think do allow works. it for banks, and we kind of, if you look up and down Mass Ave, people get advantage of signs that are turned facing up and down Mass Ave quite a bit, so mm -hmm. figure. Yeah. Okay, so I think I will entertain a motion to approve the signs as Presented in the, uh, just looking, uh, the sign package uh, by Back Bay Sign, dated 10 2 13. 9 19. Mm, 9 19. 
Ah, uh, yes. Date yeah, 9 Yep. Thank you. Dated 9 um, With the changes as discussed to the side elevation sign of um, care well, urgent care sign with all of the background, I guess. And with right. consultation with the fire or the police chief? Police, police, police yeah, chief. Yeah, director of, on yeah. The director of police services and with a strong suggestion that you keep the front door a front mm -hmm. door. We'll have a new drawing done for that right away. Right Perfect. Side side. So if you get that to Carol, then she can sure. she can you put want that into the file. Second for that? I'll second that. Uh, or a oh, motion so first. Motion. Some move. Moved. Second. Okay. Andy. Andrew seconded. All in favor? Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. First one. That's great. Right. <laughs> exactly. Welcome. Thank you. So I hope the board hearing lived up to your expectations. <laughs> so if we have a serious emergency, we should not come to you. We should go straight to the emergency room. Yes. Life threatening. Life right threatening. Right okay. Yes. How much is life threatening in my book? I'll be down. <laughs> <laughs> life threatening, the ambulance is coming yeah. to you, right? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Let's just do it. Yeah. So, we're going to have to Oh, but now Jake's coming up. No, I think, I think we should be okay. We have next? Yeah. yeah. We were teasing you, Jake. We were doing good on time. Okay, we'll give it <laughs> two minutes to clear a little bit here because I think we're going to be okay. Uh, on Right. So sit on down. I might just wait two minutes. Well, that's good to see you. Nice to see you guys. Too. Have to have to do it with a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get there eventually. The last ten bagels would be great. The ironic thing is when I ran into the fire, as it is back he was giving me a hard time. I have reduced going? <laughs> this parking space by one. Oh, so the you irony is you keep saying you owe me a parking space. Owe me a parking space. <laughs> and here he is volunteering to give one up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can change that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Uh, oh, that's 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 you. I want to hear that. that's 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 okay. So, um, Next item of business on our agenda is a Sims update, and here to give us a bit of an update is uh, Jake Upton of Arlington 360. Um, okay. okay, so just, uh, just to roll into a sort of a construction update and sort of expect to Jake, can you just hang on for one second? Um, I'm sorry, can you just open that door and just go and keep it open? Okay. Thank you. Um, Quick, quick run through. We've been making great strides on the construction, um, and are into punch level details on a lot of a lot of the buildings. Um, the uh, B units have now been turned over, um, and um, they have exterior punch still to go, but the interior units have been accepted, um, and that allows um, our brokerage team to get into the units and show prospective buyers, which is um, which is very helpful. Um, we are hoping to start punches on the A units this week, um, and the exterior of those buildings are being done right now. So we're going to sort of finish the exterior, and then that crew will go over to the in, uh, exterior of the B units, and just there's been just some touch-up paint, and some, some cleanup on the outside, but basically uh, those are rounding out and coming together pretty well. Um, the, the C and D units are expected by the end of November um, to be done, and that will make a big difference. We can move the construction. Um, fence away from at least the D units and hopefully the C units pretty quickly. So there's going to be a lot of concentration in that area um, up at the top of, of Sim Circle. Um, the Vista Park has been under construction. Um, the hardscape is basically done. There's some, um, some, some detail work to do on the stairs and some of the joints and the concrete work. Um, but the pavers are in. Um, that'll be backfilled with, um, with loam and, um, and sort of going through a process of seeding. Um, or getting ready to see in the spring. Um, for, for Talking about the upper or the lower the upper, Vista? Upper Vista Park. Um, we 
expect all that planting to be in by the end of the week, this week. The lower Vista Park has been graded. Um, well, we went over some final details with Christine today on some seed mix and things like that, but the plants have been delivered and they're going to begin going into the ground. And uh, we're hoping that in about two weeks we can take down that perimeter fence that's um, just on the other side of the sidewalk as you drive up so that we'll start to, to look out. Um, we've done some of the um, clearing of the non-indigenous species, uh, shrubs and trees um, that were blocking the views and, and sort of being invasive in general. So those have been knocked down. We thought there's a, we have a couple more cleanup items like that to do um, as we go around. Um, the, the, we've made great strides on the perimeter fencing. It was part of the landscaping plan and the landscaping along the perimeter of, of the residential project. Um, the sport court that's behind the B units is nearing completion, probably another week. Um, we probably will have to come back for the special sport court. Um, there's, a, there's a paved area, we'll do some striping on that, but I think we're going to be doing the sport court um, application, okay. color coding of the pavement probably in the spring because of the weather turning um, and, and we, the, that can't freeze while it's being installed. Um, building three is a critical path uh, for us, which is the larger of the two buildings. Um, as it near the we have occupancy in building four now um, and um, are, are really trying to focus on, on, on finishing out the interior units of building three. Um, we're expecting that by mid-December those will be done. That, that time, that schedule has slipped a little bit uh, by about three weeks over the last um, month or so. So um, we're making strides. Um, the pool deck, the plaza areas have, have been stabilized. Um, the turnaround area in front of the B units and in front of the, a, uh, the buildings three and four um, has very much come together. Um, the uh, mail um, kiosks have been installed. Um, the last one is being painted now. So we're really into the final stages of sort of cleaning up and punching out these units and, and the end is in sight. Um, we have moved the construction fence to the top of the hill um, to the left in front of the um, C, town home C units in the Vista Park. As the Vista Park is completed and, and once we are able to do our, our repaving of the road, which is supposed to be in two weeks, um, we will be able to um, take down that fencing and, and access the buildings just from the exterior and through back out of the site. So um, what we're looking at um, as well is, is, is a, uh, we've been kind of working on the landscaping coming up on both sides of Hospital Road, a little bit of concentration on the left-hand side as you come up. Um, the, um, the buffer zone enhancement plan, which is the increased um, vegetation planting, um, is now mostly in. I think we're just having, verifying that we have the right number of plants in the right places. Um, that happened over the last two weeks, so we're excited to be through that stage. Um, and Shelter has made some great progress as well. They're bringing their exterior siding material around to the front of the building. They've got their binder coat down on their turnaround. Um, the, the, um, the retaining wall is, is, is basically done. And I think they made significant progress on um, putting the material over the riprap, um, in preparing the for the planting of that. They're not, they haven't sprayed. They've sprayed the application in. They haven't sprayed the seeding in. And I, I, I am told that they're planning on doing that in the spring. Uh, but that riprap slope is changing dramatically um, uh, right now, which is uh, which is great to see. So, um, and uh, shelter has had an issue with NSTAR where they had temporary power coming to their site and, and then from their site down to the, the marketing trailer where um, the temporary power was pulled, was turned off and before the new power could be finalized and inspected. So um, they've had to get a generator on site to keep um, power to the buildings and keep heat for some of the glue applications that they're doing inside the building and some of the materials. So that has created a bit of um, strain with the neighbors. It's it's all it's a low level generator um, it does have a noise it's I think within the bylaw but it's a little bit of an annoyance and so um, um, shelter reached asked us to reach out to the town to say if there's anything that, that we can do to accelerate the, re the electrical review of the NSTAR work that that would allow them to get through that work as quickly as possible and the town managers asked the building department to be um, even more reactive for calling in that inspection for that scope of work so that's been very helpful and appreciated. 
Um, the neighbors have approved weekend work for planting um, of the parks, and so that activity has been happening, and some, some um, I would say, light grading operations to have to finalize uh, that area. Um, and as the parks are coming together and the open spaces are becoming complete, um, we are looking to sort of shift the focus onto the conservation documents, um, and we are trying to prepare um, and consensus build for the finalization of those documents that um, the final CR has been approved as to form. There was a modification, as you recall, that we did with shelter coming in to include them in the governance of everything and, and a joiner agreement to, to the CR documents. And now we are um, going through a process of documenting where the final um, conservation areas will be. And, um, and also working to with the CONCOM and the Land Trust and the Friends of the Sims Neighborhood um, uh, group to um, finalize the actual recording of the CR and, uh, and engaging the um, DCR department. EA. Well, it was DCR, but now it's EEA. The, the, the merger. DS, DCS, so the DCS, EAPA. Yeah. <laughs> but cool, which is the government entity that actually hold the conservation easement, and we need to update um, that with their legal input. So um, we've met this evening to go over that with the land trust and representatives of the CONCOM. I think we have a plan, um, plan to attack, hopefully it works, because <laughs> we have a lot of uh, different parties that have reviewed and approved those documents, and so become so much of a somewhat of a circular process with, with any significant changes to it. So we're trying to minimize the changes. Um, in terms of the off-site work, um, we were able to complete the installation of the drainage basin that was an add into the Summer Street corridor. Um, that was an extra drainage basin that was not on our original plan. Um, that was a difficult thing to pull off because of all the existing utilities and some of which were just legacy um, utilities that were in the, underneath the, the road, so we had to shift our plan a few times. So we're glad that that's in, and then now that, that frees us up to complete the sidewalk and some of the turning lanes that are um, in Summer Street, and so we can finish that scope of work. Uh, good news is I'm told that the new telephone pole for the telephone pole relocation for Verizon up on Yerksa Road, which is an off-site mitigation um, measure, um, has actually been installed, and so the process of transferring the lines over is, is soon to begin. So, uh, we'll raise a glass when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, check the box off on our conditions of approval. So, right. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm not going to Yeah, exactly. No, not too sure. early. Um, so, we are probably going to, you know, Carol and I have talked about um, sort of coming in and sort of re-reviewing where we are and kind of checking the boxes off on the conditions of approval at various stages of everything. I think we're due for a, a refresh on that over the next week or two. Um, but we've just been working really diligently to just wrap everything up and get the details taken care of and, um, and, and get these buildings occupied and kind of them sold and, and just kind of going away. And I, and I think to to Jake's point of, of checking the boxes, so we are, and I know I need to check in with him again, but uh, I think what we are going to do is have uh, Jonathan Buck, the um, attorney at, at Foley, go through all the conditions and list them. And uh, and in that way, um, uh, Carol and the planning folks um, can work their way through it with with us and but and also with Jake and to kind of go through the different conditions so that we'll have one meeting nearer the end, um, or at least one, maybe we'll do it in parts, but where we all go through the different conditions and go through them and uh, get comfortable with them. Because I think in the end, the building inspector is going to want to hear mm -hmm. that the ARB is comfortable with, the, that the different conditions, with bonding, with everything else mm -hmm. that's been done, uh, that we're comfortable that those conditions have been met for when he gives the final certificates of occupancy. So I, I think in, in a timing range, we're probably talking maybe not, I don't think we're talking about the next meeting, but probably the meeting after we could be in that position. So uh, we'll have to just take a look at dates and, and all that kind of good stuff. But I think that's where that's where we're at. And uh, I think after that one, we, we will <laughs> raise a glass. Yeah. So I, I think that would make sense. Big glass. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so that is coming down the pike. Just wanted to let you know. We'll get it in front of you. 
good time, of, uh, a good amount of time ahead of time. Um, I just need to kind of get together with Jonathan and, and let him know what the exercise is and what we're trying to do. So, yeah. And a big, a big section of, of those conditions are the CR documents are relating to finishing the parks. So by completing the construction of that and getting those documents done, that'll be a lot of check marks. That, that's a lot. So that we're really going to start focusing on on, on those uh, that portion of the project over the next uh, two three weeks, and hopefully um, bring those in line because we see those as critical path also on um, sort of finishing the completion the the requirements for the certificate of occupancy, the final mm -hmm. certificate of occupancy. So, um, are both parks going to be landscaped this year then? Lower Vista at the same time. Yeah, yeah. so the, for, for our, our email exchange this morning on the seating of the park, I think that um, there is a desire to do the seating from the contractor's perspective, but we also um, recognize that we are a bit late for the high in the season. Yeah. And so, um, at the very least, if we do allow them to do that, we're going to be pretty tight on their need to come back and guarantee. Uh, yeah, they'll have the, to the come planting. back most likely. Um, there, but we certainly do want to get get that fence down, that temporary fence, the construction fence, and the screening that's up there, so that people can start to see more of you know some of the attributes of the site. Um, Will you have all the interpretive elements in the Upper Vista Park this yeah, year? Yeah, I think those are supposed to be all installed. The signage really should be done in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, there's right. a lot of the historic signs that are still to go. There's one sign in front of shelter that we need them to complete their site work. Uh, and so we're going to give to them to install when they're done. Um, but the, the road signage, there's a do not enter and a one-way sign for, this, for the old hospital way connector road from mm -hmm. Sim Circle to Woodside Lane. Um, those need to go in. Um, and then all the historic signs in the, in the car should be coming in, as well as a lot of the identification signs for the world town on A and B. Um, they just need to go actually on you know, the numbers on the street, street addresses. So, um, I put your light in. Do you have the street lights? And street lights are in. They're functioning. Um, we've gotten some comments about them. Um, so we're verifying that they were per plan, which we think they are. But um, yeah, we we, we really we really completed there. Um, the the screen fencing has been a big you know difficult you know process to weave that through the the buffer zone without minimizing any new damage to trees, but also for working with everybody to maximize the um, effectiveness of the screen to the extent that we can. Um, but we think we're pretty much done with that. We still have that last little section to go around the back side of Building 3 that runs parallel with Brattle Street, um, but that should be done soon and, and go through a punch list where some slats that were not done for the installation just need to go back and get tacked in, that type of thing. So, um, Are you going to paint those light bulb bases? No. no. You're not going to like those, are you? <laughs> they're, they're concrete. The, the problem is, is if you paint them, they then peel and it's hard to keep Blood them Let's stain um, They're concrete and they're tall. Mm -hmm. And the light sits on top of them, unfortunately. Yeah, that's done because they're aluminum poles. So if anybody backs in or just taps those poles, they come down very hard. So the design, it's often used in many different parking lots in different configurations, is to bring the base, the concrete base, up a little bit to the base after the bollard. Right. And then the, 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 the mm -hmm. it onto the top of that. So um, that is per plan. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Anything else? Well, I gotta get up there. Sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah. Are any condos yeah. sold yet? Uh, none have closed, um, but there are some under agreement. And how many of the rentals are occupied? I think like 14. I think 14 now? Number. Yeah, there are 14 leased. I'm not sure how many are actually occupied. I think maybe 10 or 12 are occupied. So that's, uh, that's begun, and then the affordable lottery process has begun as well. And um, and that those are being done for the whole complex, and so we're hopeful to get through that. I can't remember the date. I think the applications are due even on the sixth or something. Yeah, I mean the, the deadlines are coming and then I think in two weeks it's mm -hmm. the lottery itself. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Yep. Yep. So we want to bring in. Get, we're really pushing that building three for coming online mm -hmm. for occupancy, so that we can get it all by all the affordables. 
So um, that's what I know. We've been working with Laura on finalizing some of the details um, as it relates to the affordable housing. Yep. Before you know, to have all the address. parking yeah, right. issues. Yep. yep. It's been a lot of conversations around that. And uh, I think, you know, Laura and staff are coming up with a, a, a good plan with respect to all of that. So okay. I think that'll be all set and, and, uh, and finalized. So that, that should be good. Yep. So. Yeah, we got a request for some more information and sort of a statement of our official policy, which we'll be turning over for final approval. And we also have a, a layout plan that we'll be delineating which spaces go where in a, in a sort of a finished process and adjunct with our condominium documents and ties to the exhibits to the condominium documents that we've done. So. Right. And I, I would envision that that wouldn't come back here. That that will that'll be handled by by, by, Laura. by, by Laura. Yeah. Laura. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. Good. Thank you. Questions. Good. It's great. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Great to hear you, Jack. Uh, you know, and I still continue. If anyone, you know, come up visit, just just let me know when you I want to do it. You can go to parts um, of the site now. I know. I, I yeah. 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 You really can. <laughs> do a drive by. Which is kind of nice. We're going to have a special secret tour, too. <laughs> I like the special secret tour. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank Thanks for the update. Right on time. Um, okay, so uh, now we're on to uh, the fun of approval of minutes. And there's one thing on minutes I just wanted to mention. Um, as we've kind of caught up here quite a bit, uh, there's probably a little bit more catching up to do. And uh, as such, I think the other thing we're going to do, I'm going to talk to town council about it and that type of thing, but I do think we have the ability to throw draft minutes out there after media review or, you know, we can decide who reviews it at any particular point. Um, you asked me to check. Yeah, did you? Kid Buckley, yeah. He said that the, the board has to approve them. Thing. Really? Yeah. Okay. I got bad information then. Uh, I thought I, I'm sorry. I thought I got back to you. No. No. Uh, okay. Mm, I, well, I won't listen now. to that person again. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything to prevent you from putting draft minutes up, but you still have to approve them. Oh, and put up I final can, ones. Okay. So, so I think that's fine. I, I do understand that. But I think in order for expediency from now on, we might end up putting up draft minutes. Um, if we don't get them up to them. You, you get them as soon as they're drafted. Okay. The problem is they don't get drafted. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. We need two carols. That's yeah, we need, we need to clone carols. So. Okay. So the ones we have in front of us today are, the first one is October um, 15th, 2012 is the first one. And go around. Please, if you've got uh, for... Uh, Sort of typographical things in the first discussion. I guess the the second box that says discussion in bold. In the third line towards the right hand side, could, Carol, could you squeeze a Z into my I'm name? Sorry, between I, I, I'm way behind. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we're, we're on, on October 15th. October 15th, 2012. Okay, so we're, yeah. We're we're here. Oh, 2012. We're on the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry. I, I got it. Okay, I'm here now. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was going chronologically. This end of the table is with it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the about the fourth line where my name appears, there's a the Z is missing. So, Thank you. Um, then down uh, in the about the uh, the agenda item Sims update uh, in this two, three, four, six, seven, eight, n nine line, I think it is. Uh, it looks like you want to say Cobalt Banker, and there's a D that's mm -hmm. in Banker, so we can strike that. In Documents Used, written in that box right below mm -hmm. that, um, on the first line on the right-hand side, uh, where it says Scheduled, I think you mean a schedule of Arlington 360 color scheme, so not, you'd be striking the D at the very end of that. Okay. On the vote, in the second line, I think you would say Mr. West seconded, and I'll vote it in favor as opposed to Mr. West approved. Although we do usually agree with Andy. <laughs> yeah. And then the last item was on the agenda item approval of minutes. We don't identify what date those minutes are. So I think a approval of minutes dated or from. Mm -hmm. Be good. I remember the three stars. 
Yeah, I actually remember that as well. Kristen, anything else? No, I don't have anything else. Okay. You're good? Uh, as a mic. Uh, Bruce. Oh, do you want me to move? Yeah, if you could. Okay. Well, Did we get these ahead of time? Yes. And I just missed it? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 mine I, I, weren't in the packet. Were they in your packet? They were in the packet, but I, I missed the them the first time. So I think they were fine. I didn't, I didn't so. get them in the packet. And you I didn't did, get the you agenda. You did get color either. slides. But, you did get but color I did get colored prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah. So problem. I won't have any comments, but that's okay. So I would move to approve the minutes of October 15, 2012, as amended. Is there a okay. second by Andy? All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have one abstention. Andrew? Yes. Was not here. I'll just give a nod when you're ready for the next one. Okay. One second. That was a long time ago. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one we've got is August 19th, 2013. Date I almost remember. <laughs> um, Bruce, anything on okay. this one? Three small things on the vote. Uh, in the third line, uh, we want to say of the required, not requires, spaces. And then a little farther along in the third line, previously allowed. Okay. And then skipping down to the agenda item about two-thirds of the way down the page, there's a sentence that begins on the fourth line and runs into the fifth that says, the chairman asked Mr. Fitzsimmons if he would, I think it should be if, not ID. That's it for me. I'll come back to you, Christine, if you want Thank to keep you. Uh, <laughs> Thank Andy, you. Andy, anything? Um, I think I'm okay. I have none. You have none on that. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. You were That's okay. Here. I was I here. Apologize. Apologize. Yeah. That's right. Common ground. There's 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 few, but That's yeah. right. Did you get this one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You did. Okay. I'm good. Okay. As am I. Uh, we move to approve the minutes from August 19th, 2013, as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That one's unanimous. Sorry about that, Andrew. That's all right. They do go back far. I, 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 they do go back far. Exactly. Um, and uh, finally, uh, when Carol's ready, uh, September 23rd, 2013. We'll go ahead. Okay, great. Bruce, anything on this one? They're perfect. I'll come back to you, Christine. I'll go with that. That's fine. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> Bruce Andrew? is very thorough. Same. Andy. I'm okay with this, too. As am I. Perfect. Nice job, Carol. And move to approve. Minutes of September 23rd, 2013. Second. Any seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Putting that one aside, and we're going to let Carol just do her thing for another minute or two if she needs to. And then we're going to talk about the master plan for a couple minutes. Maybe what's coming up. I think there are a couple yeah. more things just coming up. Two quick things. The, um, you recall that the uh, board wanted to um, get some time on a master plan advisory committee agenda, and um, they're working at quite a pace, very, very full agenda. So one of them, they had an, an idea that if you'd be willing, they could, would be willing to come out on a Monday night and get on one of your agendas so that they could attend here to hear Andy speak about it at one of your upcoming meetings. Uh, and my observation is that you haven't been as busy as they are. <laughs> you haven't been as busy as you were in, in uh, recent years where you met uh, so frequently. Uh, we got a nice break last month. So if you're amenable to that, they are very interested in hearing Andy uh, describe the Mill Brook planning concept. Uh, so no, we call it Mill Brook District or something. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's not just the Mill Brook, because that's the Brook. That's the Mill Brook District, you could call it. Just for, it helps to 
focus on. Yeah. You, the district has other issues, though, so I've hesitated to leap to district because it, Im oh. it, it implies certain things that may or may not happen. Quarter? Quarter. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> I get it. Baby steps. Well, I don't know. What kind of, what kind of district will it be? Do you know? What, do you know? People will conclude, will make, they'll come to conclusions about district and what is, we don't know what what it will be, if it will be something that works its way into design guidelines, if it's something that will work its way into zoning or not, if it's something that will just work its way through private oh, I pers persuasion of private uh, property owners or through town owned. But all of those things are talking about an entity, not a piece of water. So the Millbrook area. The yeah, between Millbrook and you that. We don't have to name it tonight, but we all Initiative. know what we're talking about. Andy, it's your presentation. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, your presentation. When you wrote it down, you, you just said Millbrook. A Millbrook concept or something? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I try not to um, make it sound like it's something that's being, it's all fully baked and it. it's going to be delivered on a platter. Because I, I, I hear. I, I think, I think, I think what would be nice is for them to hear what kind of resource they've got there. Yeah. Regardless. And that's what I find you are um, very good at explaining. The the how we get there isn't as important right now as the vision, sure. which is what and you're what very it? good at sure. presenting. Pocket farms right around it. You know, they may have no yeah. concept of what is already there. So, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that that's important. no. I think it's it's important that yeah, I guess I keep having trouble getting people past the linear park. Yeah. And on to the idea that there could be other opportunities, whatever you want to name them. And cross connections between the three, yeah. three features. So um, I can work with the chairman on an upcoming agenda. I think that sounds good. And we'll just make sure it's one that Andy... Right, because Andy already makes himself available on Mondays for the most part. And well, this way you I, I was available for that last one. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't. Yeah. Yeah. They had no time. So, so I think that's a that's a good idea. Plus, they want to meet you all. Yeah, I think it's a eleven members plus the consultants would potentially be. Do you yeah. want to click through with that many people? Do you want to have the projector, or do you want to just leak through and give them each a copy? Uh, your choice. And depending on what else we have going on, we have one um, sign. Um, Amend, you know, reopening of a special permit for a gas station sign coming up in December. Projector uh, might be nice for people at home. Yeah, it might be. I don't want to put anybody to sleep any more than I already do, but um, if with that many people in the room, it's kind of hard yeah. to. I doubt everybody will come. They haven't had any. Yeah, everybody I, I should think that's the case, but we'll do it's as well as we can. Whatever. Just we whatever probably we show it against that wall if we. Yeah. Whatever you think. Yeah. No, that sounds good. We'll figure it out, but we'll yeah. work with you. We'll put it on the agenda, and then we'll make sure you're here and work with you. I'm, I'm down for it any time. Okay, Great. So you know. Okay, good. Um, so as far as your work schedule goes, you expect that you'll be continue to be available on Mondays. Yes. It doesn't matter. Nothing to avoid. No Monday nope. to avoid. Okay. Great. Except next Monday. Okay. <laughs> and Monday after that. <laughs> well, and three Mondays is very good. <laughs> And the only other... Um, I, was, I was available for this thing. <laughs> I, I got some You points. get credit. We'll give you yeah. credit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll put the check mark next to <laughs> you. Yeah. I'd love to know, though. I'm going to call this. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's okay. Um, there is a workshop Thursday evening, a presentation of the baseline report, most of which has been posted... Uh, there's one element still to be received, the land use element. Uh, will also be, I, I know that comments will be received um, for several weeks after the workshop um, on Thursday. So uh, you're very much invited to come out for that, to hear the presentation on the vision goals and the baseline reports. And where is that, Carol? That is at the Central School on the 7th. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m in the main room. And as your liaison, I cannot attend that meeting. Okay. So if some of you could attend, that would be great. But we all have it 
Everybody got that in their packets, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of breathing. Wait. Oh, I just you got didn't the get it? I didn't get it. No, no I, I just know the director's no. report. Are you talking about the baseline reports? No, that was uh, that was delivered to the Mass Plan Advisory Committee. Oh, I thought these guys were going to get it too. That was the idea. I didn't know that was the idea. Oh, <laughs> I thought no. you were going to put it in everybody's packets. No, I didn't know that. I thought it was just for the Mass Plan Advisory Committee, but we can make. We can make copies. I think it would be handy for them to have it. That would be great. Or you'll, we get it, you'll get it before Thursday. Or we can ask Judy to just give them the Dropbox, the Dropbox yeah. link also, and you can look at them on the computer if you or want. Or print it out yourself. If it's you a lot of stuff to print out. Oh. Mm -hmm. if, or if you... Um, what are you going to do on Thursday? It's just going to be the presentation. It's not handing stuff out. No, it's not handing stuff out. Because it's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you if you could get us copies, uh, printed copies, oh, uh, you know, uh, at, at some point, that yeah, would be Yeah, I'd like helpful. to get them to you so that you have time to, to look at them before the comment period. Well, I think you, yeah, and how, when does that go? Maybe I'll let you know when copies are made. If you're strolling by Town Hall, you can pick them up. Otherwise, yep. we will get them to you some other way. Okay. It won't be that big a deal just to mail them to you. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be worth it. Or just have them available, we can pick them up. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's the other yeah. thing. If you just send us a note that says that they're available, I think all of us come, each of us comes by here enough to, right, sure. to pick them up. Yeah, that's, that is the best way. Does anybody want it on the Dropbox instead? I'm or not going to do that. We've had trouble doing that. Judy has to send the link directly yeah. to you. Yeah, no, you I can't have done the Dropbox. Yeah. The, the problem with the Dropbox is sometimes you've got more than one Dropbox and you're trying to coordinate, okay, which which one is this? So, yeah, yeah. that can be difficult. Okay, good. That's it on Master Plan. Great. Anything else from new business or anything else? Well, then, it sounds like a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.